That's why you need to make sure you get a testimony. Because without a testimony, there's no test and there's no money. So if you want some money, you get yourself a testimony. I'm preaching up in here. Someone needs to take out some Twitter and tweet me on that one. You can tweet me at Living Waters Church. Just tweet me right now. That was a good one right there. Hey everyone, Digital Pastor here, and today we are talking about the fundamentals or the bread and butter of preaching. The preaching of the Word of God is extremely important and sacred. As preachers, we are heralding the actual Word of God. Sermons aren't cute little messages or therapy sessions for Christians. Preaching is a time that we receive from the Word of God, allow it to change and transform our minds, souls, and spirits, and put our gaze upon the Lord. Before we start, remember, don't forget to subscribe and click the bell button to be part of our notification squad. Now, I'm not always perfect in all of these areas, but this is what I strive for. So without further delay, here are my top four fundamentals, in my opinion, when preaching the Word of God. Number one, write an outline. One of the most practical disciplines that you can do as a preacher is to write out an outline for your sermon. Now, why is that? A couple of reasons. First, it keeps us preachers on track and our ideas focused. A preacher that is just shooting from the hip or getting lost on rabbit trails is incredibly distracting. Being organized and writing an outline is very important for your preaching. I typically do about three to five main points for my sermons. This keeps the sermon straightforward and easy to digest. You want the people to be able to walk away and know exactly what you are trying to communicate through your sermon. You don't want people to leave and think, well, that sounded great. I have no idea what he was trying to say though. Let's take John 3.16 for a basic example. A good three point shell of an outline might look something like this. Point number one, God loves the world. Point number two, God gave his son. And three, faith in Jesus brings life. These three points will be the focus of the sermon. You want the sermon to have vision because preaching is not just the communication of data, but the heralding of God's word. You might even put in some sub points of each of the main points and maybe throw in an appropriate illustration or a story, but please do not let the illustration or the story become the focus of the sermon. I see it far too often that preachers take a really catchy and really kind of slick illustrative sermon and the whole sermon revolves around that. Don't do it. Having an outline will keep you focused on the main message of the sermon. If you want, you can even add some closing applicable questions to the sermon and end with a salvation message. My suggestion is to always have a small salvation message at the end of every sermon. The Lord forbid if you ever had an unbeliever hear your message and hear no call to salvation and repentance. We never know how much time we're going to have with the people. Always include the call to repent and for people to put their faith in Christ. You don't know who might not be saved. So write an outline and don't shoot from the hip with a generic thought in your head. The Holy Spirit moves through the preaching, but this is not an excuse to be led by the Spirit and not fully prepare a message or write a well thought out outline. Point number two, is preach the text. If there is one thing that really concerns me about a lot of the preaching today is preachers that don't faithfully preach the text they have selected or don't even have a scripture text at all. The time of preaching is a time to exalt the Bible, not your favorite topics and opinions. Today we're talking about forgiveness. Open your Bibles as we talk about love today. Today we're talking about the family. This is why at our church we preach expository through the Bible. When you preach expository preaching, you are focusing on the text and exposing what it means. Now, this is vastly different than thinking of a topic you want to preach about and searching out for texts that support what you're trying to say. That is a dangerous road to go down. Now, there's nothing wrong with the occasional topical message, but when preaching, the text must be the absolute foundation of the sermon. Don't just bust out Jeremiah 29 11 and start preaching about the problems that your church people are going through. That is not the point of the text. Context, context, context. Study your scriptures. Pour over the words and the verses and pray about what God is saying in the text. Don't preach your opinion or agenda in the sermon. Let the text preach for itself. Read the commentaries from guys like Spurgeon, Darby, Wesley, Henry, Calvin, and all of those old dead reformers. You should know the text you are preaching on backwards and forwards, inside and out. So study, 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 and please be faithful to the text. Number three, don't preach too long. This is a common mistake among preachers is that they preach way, way too long. In my humble opinion, the sweet spot for preaching is about 28 to about 35 minutes. When you go much past about 35 minutes, people are going to start to zone out and most everything you are preaching on is going to be going in one ear and out the other. Think of it like watering the grass. 
you need to give it enough water to nourish it. But when you leave the water on for too long, the grass gets flooded and it can't soak up all of the water. Don't overdo it. You want people to remember what you are preaching on and retain it. Most people are not going to be able to soak up much past about 35 to 40 minutes. Once you enter the 35 minute and up area, eyelids are gonna start drooping and there's gonna be a mass exodus of people taking a bathroom break and ultimately what happens is a distraction from the word of God. Some places in the world preach for way longer than 40 minutes and that might work for them. But in general, 28 to about 35 minutes is going to be the sweet spot for the length of your sermon. This is not because we would rather not hear or can't handle a long sermon, but because there's only so much the mind can take in one sitting before it stops being retained and hidden in your heart. Point number four is preach with reverence. We call the Bible the holy scriptures. They are holy. They are God-breathed words from God given to man by inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Preach with reverence and with honor. The sermon is not a time for you to work up on your stand-up comedy act or build a rapport with the people. This scripture text kind of reminds me of this joke I heard the other day about nacho cheese. See, one time there was a dairy farmer. So many preachers I see today on Facebook and YouTube have a very flippant and irreverent attitude towards the word of God. And then King David took his sword and he went all Game of Thrones on those soldiers. They're cracking lots of jokes and shooting the breeze with the congregation. When the disciples were in the Garden of Gethsemane and all of those soldiers came up, it was like a disciple mannequin challenge. Saying things that are sacrilegious and overall just treating the sermon time as common and not as holy. There's nothing wrong with the occasional humor in a sermon, but the question you need to ask yourself is, how is my spirit and attitude towards the word of God and the sermon? Do I look at it casually? Do I hold it in honor? Many churches have begun to call sermons talks or discussions. You know, I'm not even a big fan of the word message. There's a power in the word preach. The word preach comes from the Greek word keruso. This word means to be a herald, to officiate as a herald, to proclaim after the manner of a herald. Always with the suggestion of formality, gravity, and an authority which must be listened to and obeyed. If we as preachers treat the word casually and without reverence, we are dishonoring the word as well as God. We are not instilling in the people a seriousness and weightiness that comes with the word of God. So preach with reverence. So there you have it. That's my top four preaching fundamentals. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and a share. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, leave it in the comment section below. If you have any fundamentals that you thought should have been in this list that didn't make it, go ahead and leave it in the comment section below. And until then, preacher, preach the word of God. Yeah.